In today's tutorial, we're going to make a very interesting dish cloth using the corner to corner concept. We're going to apply some stripes and this will be a lot of fun. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on a corner to corner concept of using this for a dishcloth and I'm gonna show you how to change colors. I'm gonna show you how to grow bigger and smaller and I'm gonna show you how to do some striping work and what to look for when you're going to do that. So we have one stripe direct, directly down the middle and you can have a lot of fun with this particular concept and the key idea for this is never to have any yarn strands coming out of the work and I'm gonna show you how to deal with those as we go along as well. So let's work on the corner to corner dishcloth now. So in today's pattern we're going to be using Bernat Handicrafter or Sugar Lily and Cream. Both are made by Yarnspirations. You need to use cotton when you're using this kind of concept for your kitchen or your bathrooms. Because of it's cotton you can machine wash it and it will hold up to scrubbing dishes. Also being tea towels, uh, pot holders, a lot of great things can be done with cotton. There's also a free pattern today that we're going to be talking about and this also has a diagram of showing you what's happening with the stitches as we grow bigger and bigger and you can see that there is a, a striping concept that is slightly different from the way that I've done it but again that's your creativity. You can decide what's right for you. So without further ado let's grab some yarn and let's show you how to do this particular idea. You're going to need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. And we are going to put the slip knot onto the hook. Make sure you leave an extra long tail for yourself to use a darning needle to weave in the ends. You really do wanna do it with the darning needle when it comes to dish cloths. Let's insert our hook. So we're going to do this as corner to corner concept and this is really quite easy. If you've ever done a corner to corner you know exactly what to do and if you're not this may be your lucky day. I want you to chain six. So yarning over, pull through six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now this is the start of one corner that is going to be on the side as well as one box. So let's just pull up the example and show you what we're doing. So each one of these is like a box. Do you kind of see it? It looks like a box. Okay, see how it's working together? So in one direction the boxes all lean in one direction. So you can see they're all kind of leaning on their side in this direction but you're looking at the white. They're kind of like facing up as if you're crocheting it. So depending which way you're going it makes these turn over on their side or stand straight up. So what we're doing here right in the very beginning is that we're creating the concept of the corner. So what I want you to do is fourth chain from the hook. So just count back. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, get the back loop only and I want you to double crochet in that fourth chain and I want you to double crochet um, a few more times. So just keep going into the next chain, double crochet and then the final chain. Okay, so the chaining of the six, okay the first part of it counted as one double crochet standing up and then the other three are standing side by side. So each one of the boxes is made up of four double crochets that appear to be standing up on their edge. Now see this tail? This is the very corner so it's gonna get wider from this point and just remember that tail is on the corner. Let's turn our work and do up row number one. Just a correction, this is row number two. We're gonna turn our work. So in order to start a row and we're growing bigger we have to always do the same thing. Watch what we're gonna do. Remember how we chain six? We gotta do the same thing. So one, two, three. Okay, so three is the bottom of a box and then what I do is I, I hold it. So I remember that. So four, five, and six. So because I pinched it here, that's my first stitch where I'm gonna go. So I'm going to double crochet where I'm pinching it. Here's right in. Okay, that was the fourth chain from the hook and then I just double crochet the other three. So I'm just double crocheting the, uh, the final three. So what appears that I have four here but what's going on here? It looks kind of weird. So all you just need to do is come to this space here. Okay, it's the right in the space and just drag this over so it pulls over going right into the space, yarning over, pulling it through and through. You're doing a slip stitch. You're then going to, so do you see how this is lying down on the side and these are standing straight up? So whenever I'm working on it, all the ones that I'm working on will stand straight up and the other row that I'm attaching, they'll all appear to be have fallen over. You're going to chain up three. So one, two, three and you're going to put three double crochets into the same space. So one, two 
and three. And that's row number two. Do you see that? So let's turn our work and go for row number three. So turning the work. So what are we gonna do to start? If you said to chain six, you write. So one, two, three. Use your fingers and pinch because that's your first stitch. Four, five, six. Right where you're pinching is your first one. You're gonna double crochet yourself back. So one, two, and three. Okay, it's the same thing every time you're growing and getting bigger. So what we're going to do is just pull it up and here's the next chain one space or chain space. Just insert the hook, pull through and through and then chain three. One, two, three and then double crochet three more times into the same space. Are you getting the concept? It's all the same. This is why everybody's so addicted to the stitch. It's so easy. So once you get that done, just reach for the next one over here and insert in and pull through. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and then going into the same space three more times. So each one of the boxes are made up of four double crochets. Let's turn our work and go for fourth row. So we're gonna just go with this color one more time before I'm gonna show you how to change colors. So we're gonna chain up how many to start. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six, right where I'm pinching is the first one. So you can count it back but if you pinch it, you'll save so much time. So you're gonna double crochet yourselves back on the chain, a total of three more, uh, three times total which gives you your four double crochets that you need and then you pull up and you go right into the space. Slip stitch, chain three, one, two, three, same space, three more du double crochets. Okay, coming up here, slip stitch, one, two, three, Okay, so there's gonna be three double crochets there. And I'm going to, at the end of this row, I'm gonna show you how to change color. So I'm gonna just come into the final here and one, two, and three. And coming into the final. So what I want to do at this point is that I want to fasten off my work and we are going to use a darning needle because it is a dishcloth and I want to stop here and I wanna add another row of a different color. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to cut this yarn about 12 inches and using your darning needle just pull through the loop like this and I want you to weave this in and out using your crochet hook into some of the stitch work back along the row and I want you to come and just come down to the next corner so just follow it down and just go in there as well. And my goal here is that because I'm going this far back, I'm going to be able to capture this yarn as it's gonna sit directly with this other piece right here. So it's gonna get stuck underneath the stitches. And then I'm gonna use the remainder of this at the end to weave in my ends in order to get it completely lost in my work. So let's turn our work. So let's go and this is where the end is. So just remember where it is and I'm gonna grab another color and show you what to do. So I'm going to start off with slip knot and use a different color and I wanna come into the very edge where at the very top, okay? So and I'm going to yarn over and how many chains am I gonna, I'm gonna yarn, yarn over and attach. How many chains am I gonna do to start? I'm still getting bigger. If you said six, the answer is right. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five and six and then just do the same thing that you know how to do on the th fourth one back. Just double crochet yourself back along this chain. So we're still getting bigger in this concept. So it does change when we get smaller. So what I want you to do, this strand, strand here, I want you to just hold it up over your work and I want you just to insert in so that this strand is down on top and yarn over pulling through, okay? and I want you to chain up three. So one, two, three, just like you normally would. Keep it laying down on top of the line and this will get stuck underneath the stitch work. So for three more double crochets. So you barely see it 
coming up on this edge here and it's getting buried over here and then just let it fall out now and you can use a darning needle to hide in the rest and you're just gonna work your way across the row like you normally would have but you're using a different color. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at the end of this row I'm gonna change color once again just to show you it again. So you can do the dish cloths any size that you want to. You just have to commit on how big that you want it before you start decreasing it. Okay, so coming up to the end, chain up three. So do you remember how to fasten this off? Okay, so I'm gonna come up to the end. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna grab my scissors, cut about 12 inches, maybe a little bit longer. And I want to pull it through the loop and I want you to weave it in some of the stitch work coming back. And what's my goal here? Do you remember? Is that I want to get it and weave it through the first corner. So just follow it down here. Cause then that'll get me stuck. I can stick my it, um, stitches in and this can be well hidden at this point and then leave the rest of it on the other side. So what I like to do is I like to have all my weaved ends coming in on the one side. So do you see how these are on this side? So then when you turn it around you don't see anything. So let's just uh, finish that here. So now I'm going to add another color and we're gonna get bigger one more time before we're gonna get smaller and I'll show you how to do that next. So let's grab another color. I'm gonna go for green this time and I'm gonna create a slip knot. Remember to leave a little bit of an extra long tail. And let's put it in our hook. So we have to look where the other one finished off. You can see it's right here. So I wanna start on that side and we're gonna get bigger one more time. This is gonna be the very middle of the stripe. So if you ever look on this thing, you'll hear, you'll see the white here. So this will be the last time it's gonna grow and then on the other side we're gonna get like this pink. We're gonna start decreasing on the other side. So you have to be very strategic with this. So one of the uh, ideas that people have is that when they do stripes they end up misaligning this last one and what they forget to do is that they should just do one row here in the middle or do three rows. If you will notice this is that you see one, two and three. You can never put two rows in the middle here and keep it balanced. So it either has to be one, two and three is the same color or just one or it's gotta be five. It's gotta be an odd number in order for it to work. So just be conscious of that. So it's a big question we get constantly. So let's just join our work here. Remember we're, this is the last time this is the center stripe and so we have to grow it one more time. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five and six. Coming into the one I'm pinching, that's the fourth one from the hook and you're going to du double crochet yourself back along the chain a total of three times. So okay, so now we have this green one to worry about. So what I want to do is that I want just to hold it up over top of the line and I have this other one here. Do you see this one here? This is the last one I carried. I wanna go around that one as well and pull through and through. That's a slip stitch chain three, one, two, three and then go around and put this down on top so it's going around again. If you can do most of this while you're in this motion of, of hiding it, you'll have less tails to worry about at the end of your project. You can go one more time. If you've got a longer string if you want to, you can just go up, just trap it under position and chain up three and continue just to crochet all the way. Now this is the very last time this that we're gonna grow and the next time going further on in this tutorial we're actually gonna get smaller. So I want you to just do the same concept going all the way across. Okay, coming up all the way to the other side and I wanna go right into the very end. So I'm still continuing to grow one, two, three, and I wanna finish off this final square before fastening off and I'm gonna get smaller. You don't need to change the yarn as much as you uh, have to in order to change your sizings. As far as like going bigger or smaller, you can do a solid square. It's up completely up to you. So let's fasten this off again and we're going to start getting smaller in the next part of this tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how to decrease and what you need to look for. The advantage is, is every time you decrease you're gonna get faster and faster. That's why people love this particular Afghan idea is that it starts off really quick and then it slows down as you get to the middle. But once you get to the middle like I am right now, it's going to get faster and faster because there's gonna be less boxes to do at the end. So I'm just weaving these in and let's begin the next part of this tutorial of getting smaller. 
So people get really confused with us and they email me a lot. And they, they're very confused on how it decreases. So here's an example that's done and what we've done is that we've gone up bigger and bigger and bigger until we've gotten to the middle point and we've gotten bigger and bigger in this time until we got to the middle point. You can do rectangles if you want to and if you wanna do rectangles one side has to continue to grow and the other side has to stop at the certain point. So you can actually do rectangles and it would start growing up this way if you wanted to. Then you gotta worry about your striping and your those kind of ideas. But it's very possible to do corner to corner in rectangle because of it. So because I'm at the middle point now the green that I just did on the sample is the white here. So you will notice that the pink here is if I was to grow this any further the pink should be right over here okay and it should be out over this way okay out. But because we're decreasing now you'll see that it's gonna fill in the spaces that's here and so you end up with a flat edge along the sides. So we're gonna keep decreasing and every time we decrease we're gonna eliminate one box on each side as we get smaller. So it just is a matter of just understanding that and when you go to start and stop each one of the, the rows you'll have less boxes to work with. So let me show you how to do that. So to be consistent with color I want to bring back my yellow. It's up to you. It doesn't have to be matching. It's your completely your business. So I have to look where I finished the green and this is where I finished it. I can see it, it's right here. So this is where I'm going to start with doing the yellow. So normally what I would have done is that I would have come out to the outside, chain my six and then there will be another box here and then I would fill it in. But because I'm not gonna grow it anymore my first box is actually gonna be sitting right in the space here and then working across and then I don't go all the way to this side of the over here. I stop in the last box space it is right here and so we've just eliminated out two boxes as a, as a result. So here's the thing. You need to attach this yarn right into the side here right into one of the double crochets. Do not go into this chain one space or as you'll have a very ugly border that's gonna happen. So go right into an actual stitch itself and attach your yarn. So you're gonna attach and you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. Because we're not growing we're not chaining six anymore so this makes it very easy and quicker to finish. So you've got one in here. Now if you remember that it's made up of four stitches so the other three are right in the side of the stitch here. Okay so just l putting it in put your yarn that you've attached around so it gets stuck under position and put in three double crochets. So you already know how to do this. It's a matter of starting is what is different. So you're going to then come up to the next box here. Just fold it up and then just put in your stragglers just to hide them. So slip stitch, chain up three. One, two, three and then just keep working your way across like you already know. Okay, and just attach to the next one. One, two, three. Now if you're not changing any of your yarn colors you will not have any of these tails hanging out but it's kind of what makes it the charm is the different colors that you can get with the, the corner to corner concept. So I don't have very, very many boxes left because we are gonna get smaller on both sides. So I'm just gonna finish this one up here and then we have one more box to do before we stop. So technically, so let me just slip stitch it. So technically I would have had this box plus I have one up here but we're not growing it out there. So this is my very last box right here. So we chain up three and then just double crochet three times. And what we're going to do at this point is that we slip stitch it to the final space and stop. So if you wanted a rectangle at this point because you've already stopped this side if you wanted to grow a rectangle you just keep going up on this side and the other side you always stop on the last indentation in and then you can have a rectangle. So now let's just fasten this yarn off another 12 inches of yarn like so. And you're gonna weave it in your work like I showed you before. It's the same thing and I wanna come down to this first point right down here. So just pull it down through there. And I do I like all my yarn strands to be on one side. It just makes it easier to find at the end. So I'm gonna pull it so that the ending is on this side. So we're gonna turn our work and move up to the next row. So you can see that here the yellow has now gotten smaller and now we're gonna move back to uh, this purple color or pink color back for the remainder of this project. Let's bring back the pink 
and now let's join it. So I'm just looking to where I finished that last one. Okay, so here it is here. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn my work. So we're gonna come up on the corner. Okay, so right into the side stitch itself. Okay, don't go into a space. And I wanna attach and chain up three. One, two, three. We don't chain up six because you're not growing. So then you're just gonna come into the side space leaving the straggler down on top of the line so you can get it stuck underneath there. And there's gonna be three double crochets like you already know. And then you're going to come up to the next space like you already know. So I'm just gonna move the straggler up. See it kind of blends in so you don't have to worry about it too much. Chain up three and then I leave in that straggler down on top of the line once again. So it's a way of hiding in those ends without having to worry about it too much. Okay and you're gonna keep going across. So of course if you've changed the, the width of your dishcloth the, the line will be bigger. But again just like because we're decreasing there's gonna be less boxes to do every time you do a row. Coming up to the next one and we only have one last box to do. See it's the last space. So one, two, three. So to keep it color consistent I'm not gonna change the color for the remainder of this project. So I slip stitch to the beginning and here's how I'm going to move across without changing color. So I'm gonna turn my work. I'm going to slip stitch across to the third one. So going in and I, all I'm doing is moving my starting point. So I keep slip stitching until I get to the third one and then that's where I start again. So one, two, three coming across. Okay so if you know how to do that slip stitching you don't have to change your colors or fasten off in order to get yourself in the right position. Okay and then slip stitch to the next, chain three. Now people have emailed me, asked me does it always have to be three double crochets in this space and the answer is yes. The reason for it is that the double crochet the height is made up of three so therefore in order to keep it as a block you need to do it as three. People have suggested to put uh, things of five. The problem is that the first chain is only three therefore um, it will not work out. So this is my very last box already. So I'm just gonna just join it to the top. See it gets faster and faster. So how many boxes do I have left? I have only one and two. And then I have one final. So I'm gonna slip stitch to the third one. So one, two, and three. Going right, okay and chaining three. One, two, three coming into the side. So if you start off by slip stitching to that first one of the of the one lying on its side you have a really awful gap that will be noticed. Okay you're gonna work across one, two, three. There's some amazing designs using corner to corner concepts for some really visually interesting things. Come into the space and now you have only one box left if you can see it. Let's turn our work. That slip stitch across to the third one. So one, two, and three. One, two, three, and this is the very final box. So one, two, and three. Like so, and then join it. So what I would do if I were you and you were me, turn your work and slip stitch to till you get this string right to the corner. It looks different. It looks finished when you do that. So you could either stop here and, and weave off but it looks finished when it's done at the top. So what you're gonna do is do now is just trim your string about 12 inches or so and pull it through. And what I would do is grab your darning needle. So you can pull on your work and this is what it looks like. So grabbing your darning needle you're going to insert the yarn into the needle. this and I want you to glide it in and out of your work three times. So just right underneath the stitch don't come to a border. So, okay so one. Okay and come back in the other direction for two. Okay go in a different path. If you go in the same path it will fall out and go back for a third time. When you go in and out three times your tail 
will never fall out of your work because it's impossible for your project to stretch in three directions at one time when it's being used. So then you can cut it safely right down to the project. So the other tails that are in your work, it doesn't take long to come back and all you just can do, like this one's a little short, but what I can just do is just slam a, uh, the needle onto this here and I, all I can just do is that I can just glide it through one other direction. Just underneath and I wanna capture it into some fibers. The more fibers you can catch it underneath it, the less chances are it will fall out. So because I've come up through here and up, I've just, just went up through this stitch here underneath some fibers. I can safely cut that out of position just like this. So you're gonna come back even to the starting one, do the exact same thing, just in and out three times and then you can have an amazing dish cloth just like this. All looks completely finished and you can have a lot of fun with it at the same time. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new dish cloths. We'll see ya and have a great day.